Hi ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to do this so I thought I might as well film the process. This is uh, one of them KPO power microphones. Uh, that's the animal there, look, uh, 532. Anyway, uh, I like how these work. These, uh, these have quite a good sound to them than a condenser microphone working on a 9 volt battery. And uh, I quite like them, you know, they, uh, they've got loads of audio and they've got a right good audio, I'm telling you, they're quite amazing. And uh, can't be too hard to make the amplifier that they use. So I'm going to pull it to pieces, draw it all out, copy it, component per component, make a diagram, then put it all back together so I can get rid of this and get the money back that I've got in it. <laughs> and then I've got the circuit then that's my plan because I wouldn't mind putting that circuit in a bass mic or something like that it's, a, it's got nice audio believe me folks it's got some good audio ok so uh, I'll see you in a bit ok that's uh, looking inside it folks and then we've got a ground on the right there first wire blue we receive the middle one there is the common of that the white one is TX and that red is audio ok ta 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 ok so now you can see it simple animal little electric mic please don't look at them with disgust they really have an amazing sound people they really do Right, and uh, one small uh, TX LED there. Well, it's actually it's a power LED, isn't it? And uh, of course, a TX RX switch. The small op amp. Now, the op amp that they use here, right, is exactly the same as what they use for the preamp stage in the 148 GTL DX Mark II. Right, that same IC there, they use as the. Uh, part of the uh, mic preamp for an audio line 341 or a uh, Uniden 100 or something like that and uh, we all know that they can produce good audio just from them never mind the uh, 148 GTL there and, uh, and uh, that circuit the preamp circuit the mic preamp circuit that's in the 148 runs up about an 8 volt supply uh, and so will this as well, I know in this it's running on a 9 volt but you will be able to easily make it run on 8 volt and I say that because once you built this you could make your power mic then work directly from the radio so that you'd never need to put a battery in it ever you see so it's, uh, I, I, I like it because it doesn't use many components it sounds good you could use any PTT switch with it really as long as you turn the circuit on and you've only got them small few parts there and it sounds alright I'm telling you it's impressive so I'm going to see if I can copy that I can't see why not ok folks at this point I'll have to leave you just for a short period I'll have to uh, draw all that now and copy it all ok uh, draw a diagram of it of how it connects and um, you know and uh, I've just removed its uh, mic lead now and then I'll just uh, copy it all out basically um, just how it all connects up so if you look at this part can you see where the variable slider is here at my gain right well can you see that also on the same panel here there's this part that's unpopulated i.e. here three terminals that'll be for a, uh, probably a, uh, a variable control not this screw because it's using this screw when it clamps in cabinet but it's possible that uh, <coughs> That another, you know this whole circuit board in a different model works in a uh, a base mic you know it's only an amplifier and a switch at the end of the day and it's a switch there very simple switch it looks quite complicated but it isn't. it's just it's really simple uh, three pins on you know you have six pins on bottom left six pins on bottom right <coughs> six pins top left six pins top right and centre pins on each two pairs there are commons it's as simple as that you know 
and just uses two parts. This part here is for TX and RX switching at the bottom, where there's other parts on top there is for power supply, turning power to amplifier on and off, you know, and switching mic circuit on and off in uh, TX so that it doesn't feed back in RX on some radios, it'd be squealing. Okay, so uh, strip down. Okay, people, so now I've got a tub of uh, parts <laughs> and a mocked board. Now, I didn't have to take it all off like that, folks, but um, I uh, I obviously left the uh, the operational amplifier there. It's just two, two amplifiers, as far as I know, in one chip, uh, but in this case, they're only using one, but uh, sometimes when they're all clumped up together components you can't just uh, you know it's easy to get something wrong and I want to make sure I've got it all you know so anyway uh, I've got it all stripped down this one uh, and uh, what I'll do now is I'll just build it all back together this uh, I had to take that bearable resistor out there that slider at top you see so I could see value <laughs> and also I was a bit confused with connections how it, how it were there's two wipers on that but anyway, only of course only using one, but I've sussed it all, I've made a plan of it all, or should I say a mock. So uh, they really do sound good, these folks, they're quite impressive, I'm telling you. I've heard this with my own ears. Uh, so I'll build it all back now, and then uh, I'll build uh, an amplifier on a very board, I think, something like that. I might, I don't know what I'll do anyway, but... Okay, because uh, I, I like I like the audio of that. I once had a, uh, an ADF seven seven zero cassette deck. Uh, my friend, my mate, the Hi-Fi man, he bought it brand new at uh, Lasky's at Bradford, Lasky's Hi-Fi shop, and uh, and it was uh, an AWA. ADF 770 cassette deck. Quite fancy at the time. Award winning as well and all that. Anyway. He got it and he got it cheap. One and it was brand new, but he got it cheap from the shop. X demonstration model, but there were a fault with it. The headphones didn't work. The headphones on the front of the uh, uh, cassette deck didn't work. And uh, anyway, uh, about six months later, when he was getting rid of that cassette deck, I got the cassette deck off him. And uh, I whipped it off, and straight away the preamp that it was using were one of them. <laughs> and uh, they were using it as a stereo preamp. There's two amps in one, you see, but the stereo preamp were being used to drive their headphones. I um, anyway, I put another one of those in, and it were off. Uh, but uh, in this case, the Cobra One Four Eight, as I said earlier, uses this same uh, op amp, and it uses the other part for its. Uh, Pass it Roger Bleep and TXRX switching, believe it or not. Uh, and, and audio lines and unidents, as I said, you know, and they're very, very common. They're an old chip now, they're knocking on a bit, but they do sound good. So, anyway, uh, I'll build it back. Uh, last time you'll see it like that, okay. Okay, people, so uh, I've got it all back together, <laughs> as you can see. And. Uh, and I don't think there'll be many that'll really know, will there really? But anyway, I've gone in and tested it. And she's alive, she's up and rolling, sounding just as good as before. Uh, but the only difference is now, is I've got, um, I've got a, what they call it now, a diagram of it. Okay, so I've, uh, and I've also gone hunting for my parts and what have you, you know, a battery holder. Now, like I say, lads, right, and I swear, You've got to listen to one of these before you slag them off. They look really ugly, don't they? But they really do sound really, really amazingly well for what they are. And, um, you know, I quite like these MC80s. Well, that's all basically they are. They're just, you know, and uh, they've even got a smaller amplifier in than what this is. And uh, this is the amp here in question. Now, I'm not going to build it on my very board. And I, I, well, I don't like these very but these whatever whatever they call these i don't like them much at all um i prefer uh i always have when i was kit building younger uh, i always used to just build them in like a, just a pile clump <laughs> telling you anyway uh so 
I hope the rest of my parts are new because they're all common parts so don't get frightened about this diagram pole it, it don't, it's not that complicated in that and uh, and I'll try I'll show you it all and explain to you it all how it works and um, and uh, we'll make it we'll make it we'll you know and we'll uh, but anyway I've got a 10k variable there for me uh, volume control and uh, me up amp here everything's been drawn upside down as it were in reality as I dissembled it dissembled it so uh, here's my PTT switch and these PTT switches like uh, two separate switches together so you've got uh, uh, your, your earth and your TX and RX switch in here right uh, switching radio to the TX and on top pad here uh, your 9 volt battery positive connects here and when it switches into TX it turns on here supplying up the amplifier you see and um, this is audio output from circuit coming out of this pin comes out of this cap here all the way across comes down through volume control through that cap through that 1.5k and then onto this pin here and as soon as it switches to TX amp turns on and audio passes out and the reason for that is because if it were on a radio that had a PA in it a CB that had a PA on it they'd be squealing when it were in PA mode or something similar to that you know where uh, so the, sh the shitting audio off I, I, I were a bit confused why they did that you see because when the PTT switch is in the RX state, the power amp, don't, the, the amplifier don't get powered up. You know, in other words, uh, when, when, when that and them two are connected and them two are connected, as you can see, there's no there. So uh, the supply is here, right? The positive supply coming from batteries here. So uh, when it's in RX, the amp don't get supplied up at all. And it's, that's why you don't see TX light come on right you only, you know you only you only get tx uh, power the power of the amplifier this is led here this is it's not the led this is just the pad for the led where it connects that's the positive uh and then of course the negative goes to ground you know uh, but this part here uh, this part at power supply as it as it turns on uh power gets put up here goes through that 1.5 and then this cap then uh, works as a bit like a uh, reservoir and uh, and that's your right supply voltage then for driving LED right to ground and then this 3.9 that goes to this pad here which is positive at mic element because it's a condensed electric mic that we're using and it seems that powers up the mic element and the audio is derived off this capacitor here, 0.1 UF at 50 volt, and then into amplifier. And these are just uh, what these are doing here. This is an op amp, by the way. It's two amplifiers in one chip, right? It's got two amplifiers, but uh, in the 148 Cobra and what have you, they use the other part for something else, for other parts, as I said. But one part of it's used for my camp, and that's just what's happening in here. Uh, where you just using one half of it if you like uh, and that's the power supply you see so and you can see the other pins there just not being used and, uh, and that's because we're only using one half of amp but anyway uh, these pins here are, are clamping input so that we've got the right amount of input stage gain crucially important I don't know exactly what they're doing but I believe that's what they're doing on these two pins here this is input coming in right and that um, is the output sorry the input comes in at pin 2 I call it pin 2 but this is upside down remember so the writing would be on the other side like that if you know what I mean and uh, that would be the uh, locator and the little dot you know uh, but, to, but I'll have to look on that and see which what pin is pin 1 to, to 8 you know but anyway uh, and that's what that's doing and this is uh supply as well part of supply this is reservoir uh, for reservoir for power supply powering up that pin and uh, and I, I think the reason why it has such a big 47 uf 25 volt layer is i think what it uses that for is because um when the circuit get gets turned on and off in tx and rx switching it's possible you might hear some bumping of audio you know the amplifier turning on and off as uh, the TX transmission starts 
so they've give it a, a bit of a reservoir I think that's what they've done that for um, you know uh, so, so because he won't, he won't want a lot of current in at all even when he's working so um, you know and he'll hold a little bit of supply for it in uh, fast transmissions I think something like that might, might be completely wrong it might be just filtering might be just more filtering but um, anyway so I'll build it up with what I've got here right and uh, I'll just build it scruffily and then we'll give it a test then we'll connect uh, a wire to it and couple it up to a radio <laughs> you ought, the sensitivity of uh, the the microphone you ought to see the stage gain that they produce folks these are a lot better than any standard mic and the bass and treble that these mics can produce is amazing I'm telling you you know because you're pretty quick to make that all them parts all rel readily available here and uh, they, will, they, they will be in loads of scrap radios I can assure you all of them, they'll all find all of them in, in a scrap CB, I'll bet, I'll bet you £3.88. Anyway, I'm going to build the pile. Now you see, I've got some of that. I don't really like that really, but I've got quite a bit of that. Got a damaged piece here, far too big, and some small pieces that's too small really. Uh, because I want to put mounting holes on another project there, look. <laughs> And I want to put mounting holes, you know, uh, and I, I think I'm going to put a socket. I'm going to use a socket. I was thinking of bending pins flush like that and having it flush, but uh, anyway, that's all. I've got available this stuff here where you've got to make your track. But anyway, um, I think I'll use a socket. I'll tell you for why, because I've got quite a lot of them uh, uh, little uh, op amps there, them uh, 588s quite a lot of them and uh, it, it, if I were to put a socket in it it would make it so I could have a testing device for very quickly testing them up amps you know I could just plug it into my homemade mic and hey presto I'd know whether up amp were alive straight away I think I'll go for a socket not that the uh, the op amp is static sensitive at all but anyway uh, I'll knock it together I think I'll use this one corner of that starting away Right then people, uh, we've moved now from that one, as I've said now, to a, a copy of uh, of what I've got there. Now, I haven't built this PTT part switching yet, and that's because I'm not putting it to a radio just now. I just wanted to see that the amplifier were working. So I've built all this here, and uh, everything's just identical. Now, uh, if you do want a better look at this diagram, let me know and uh and i'll give you i'll give you this shot of it all but remember that's from upside down remember right that i see that's a 588 and uh that's a 2.2 uf at 50 22k there right that's reservoir there 25 volt at 4.7 this is volume control output coming from pin 2 here well i'm calling it pin 2 i don't know yet um, no sorry it's there volume comes from pin 1 there through that cap out of there all the way across and then down through variable resistor just like that to deck and then through that other cap there through that 15k 1.5 sorry and then uh, onto PTT so that's how I've got it running right now and uh, I might turn that down a bit, you might not like that scope, I don't think camera likes that. Uh, uh, anyway, it's brilliant sensitivity wise. I'm right over here, uh, and I've only got it turned a little bit on. This is it here. Now I've got me uh, power LED, you see, that LED there would normally get switched on when it, uh, when it keys up right whereas in my case now i've just had, had an on and off switch here so the, the animal's off now right and the led goes off and i click it on right you can see my led a bit dim isn't it that led not very bright is it but that's where it connects in, into the other one uh, 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 uh. and my volume's working lovely there Right, that's my mic element at the moment, I've just left it dangling. And that's uh, me uh, op-amp there. 
and pi by 8. Okay, so uh, so what I'm going to do now, um, I think it would be a good idea to, uh, you see this switch here, if you notice it's a big double switch, uh, three pins at this side and three pins at other, and how it works is a little bit, uh, because of this audio connection, this is audio output from wipers out wiper here, through that cap, through that 1.5, and then just sits there waiting. And when PTT comes in, when it presses in for TX, right, obviously uh, from ground it shorts the TX pin, putting radio into TX, right, but on this other common here, this common to here, it does not, but this common to here, it, it lets audio then pass out into radio but also when these two touch together here 9 volt battery gets powered up and supplies the old circuit up so what I've done I've just connected that to an on and off switch so that I can do away with them two pins so now I've got me on and off switch there on my board uh, all I've got to do now is I can just use three terminals like that because I can use them two pins for the audio and then three pins at bottom for my TX-RX switching and I've uh, got an on and off switch and I, I'll add a TX-RX light as well I think somewhere on here just a couple of little TX-RX lights because I'm just going to use a normal switch for now to see it working I'm just going to so it won't release when I let go at mic, you know what I mean? So it'll just remind me that I've left it in TX. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I can tell there by looking that the audio's perfect. No humming or out like that. Sorted is that ladies and gents. It's absolutely so look at current demand. Let's look at that. That's a good circuit isn't it? I've got just under nine volt going in and look at that. It producing tons of audio as you can see, absolutely tons of it. <laughs> audio it's minutely low do you mind that's a brilliant circuit that ain't it lads eh? so I don't know how long and then that's with an LED on as well I don't know how long a, um, a 9 volt battery would last on that but I, I bet it would last a year I bet it would last you know I bet it would last a year <laughs> a 9 volt battery on that probably last two years eh? so uh, no wrong with that and at 8 volt you see another thing I love about this circuit at 8 volt if that were running on a Cobra 148 you could de designate your pin that weren't doing out your receive pin which isn't used on this model on our Cobra and you could uh, you could uh, run it through a diode uh, for safety reasons and supply that mic up you'd never have to put a battery in it and you can see the op amp here look Hold on, can't see with my camera there. Can you see that op amp down there? Well, that's the same uh, op amp there, look, that they use in the 148 GTLDX, and uh, also in. Um, I've lost myself. I've lost myself, you carrot head. Anyway, they use same IC there in audio lines and all of that. Uh, unit ends and all of that, you know, lots of unit end uh, three four ones and all of them, unit end two hundreds and that. So uh, somehow I'm going to put this somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Our engineers all suss that. Catch you later, folks. Goodbye. Okay, people. My current's gone up slightly, as it will do. I've. Uh, I've added a couple of LEDs here and a switch as you can see my switch there just grounded through <laughs> right so uh, so now as I stand uh, I'm in off state so scope don't have a connection that's why it's doing that but as soon as it does and I switch it to TX audio gets switched in and uh, we're rolling again audio audio okay so uh, and that, that's just using one resistor for the feed point uh, because only one LED is ever going to be on at one time, you know, TX or RX. And the reason for that is because I've used a normal everyday switch, right? And that's because I want it to have a lock on it. And because I'm testing it, I want to test it, see what it actually does sound like on air and what have you before I put it into some 
type of cabinet because it wants to be in a metal cabinet you see um, I want to know uh, what lads think of it and um, and sometimes I can babble on for a bit can't do with squeezing triggers neither so uh, you could just and also uh, if I put an LED on it that, that were my idea if I put an LED on it I'd know I'd left it in TX which is impossible for me I'd never do that uh, but at least you know and with powered LED you know you'd know you'd uh, can hardly see that one can you but it does work but it's a lot better when lights on to what they call it Adele audio 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 one two one two tap 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 audio audio nice is that folks right so uh, what I'm going to do now is um, is I'll sort a uh, mic lead out for it um, coming away from it with a four pin plug on it with a receive connection and then uh, we should uh, uh, and I'll get rid of this power supply here completely and I'll give it this. And then I'll just uh, I'll just wire tie a, a battery. You know I'll have a battery sat there. You know and wire tie it. Just wire tie it across so it keeps battery in place. That's all. Be all right for just a test. Ah, and see how amplifier goes. Okay. I want a piece of screen cable now. Hang on a minute for the mic lead. Hi people. Uh, right. Well. Uh, all I've got to do really now is put a TXRX lead on it. I've got a piece of screen cable coming away, going into the computer, okay? And uh, and I've just done a recording test on it. And um, see what you think of it. Uh, if I can find my mouse. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm just recording this microphone now. <coughs> to uh, to have a listen oh, to yeah. it, and uh, and I'm running the uh, computer in um, in line. Uh, forty-four one hundred hertz, forty-four thousand one hundred hertz, sixteen-bit mono, because there's only one channel, you know, one microphone. Quite basic, so, isn't it? Well, uh, we'll see how it goes. Rewind, please. Okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm just recording this microphone now. <coughs> to uh, to have a listen <coughs> to it. Excuse me. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm running the uh, computer in um, in line in uh, mm. forty four one hundred hertz, forty four thousand one hundred hertz, sixteen bit mono because there's only one channel, you know, one microphone. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Rewind, please. Thank you. Well, it don't sound too bad, does it? I wouldn't say it sounded all fantastic, uh, but it don't sound bad. It's not groggy and distorted at all, is it? Uh, it sounds quite smooth and what have you. Uh, so, uh, but uh, obviously with it uh, being a, a microphone that's got to transmit on air, it must be in a metal box, folks. We'll have to get this in a metal box. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll cut it to size you know a bit smaller like that get rid of this bit here with my little miniature grinder or something you know and then I'll find a metal box for, for it or something like that <laughs> uh, yeah. so I put my microphone out of the way now look eh? oh you know I've, I've stole this battery and uh, we'll use my microphone for a while yeah no wrong with that uh, by the way, uh, I'm sorry for my absence, um, I have been quite fed up about what's going on in my country, uh, all kinds of happening, you know, they were rioting on the same day that I posted that last video, they started rioting in Bradford, that's four miles away from where I live, Asian community started rioting and shooting each other, you wouldn't see much about that though on the news, they didn't show that on news I noticed, didn't even mention it on the news, and, uh, and that went on for about two or three days as far as I understand. Uh, police were cordon cordoning roads off and stuff like that, stopping all traffic and that. And then we've had that beheading of that woman yesterday, and then apparently two shootings in London today or last night or whatever. Hey, <laughs> bloody hellfire! Anyway, people, I'm out of here. May the force be with you. Fancy making that? That. You know, you'll find all of them parts in your scrap box. I'll put you ten quid on it, you will. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
So uh, I'm you just recording. Got yourself a nice amplified mic. <coughs> to uh, to have a listen to it, and uh, and I'm running the uh, computer in um, in line in uh, forty four one hundred hertz, forty four thousand one hundred hertz, sixteen bit mono because there's only one channel, you know, one microphone. Sounds quite nice to so, me. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Rewind, please. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All it wants that folks is a, uh, a TX lead on it. Putting in a metal box, cutting to size. I was thinking about putting an audio meter on it, you know. Uh, like a little audio meter or some uh, blinking LEDs. I I'll tell you what I saw. Uh, I come across this. Um, this is an old... Uh, this is very, very similar to a President AR7 in reality. This I, I can't remember what model it was. But it were a 40-channel AM rig. Uh, virtually identical to a little President AR7, right, how it works, just a little 40 channel AM rig, you can see I've stored quite a bit out of here, uh, but this carry on here, instead of it having a, uh, a signal meter, it just has these five LEDs, like your Amstrad 901 and all of that, well, how they work, they just work off a, uh, a cascade LED driver, like like an LED cascade type driver, this here, and uh, it's really simple circuit. Uh, it's uh, more or less only a group of resistors inside it, cascading to each other. It's hard to explain, but uh, you, you you know each one of them's like a transistor driver in there, and um, and each each different base of each different transistor driving different LEDs uh, has a different base resistance. So uh, it needs more of a voltage to turn next LED on, more of a voltage to turn next one on and so on. So you end up with a cascading type LED effect. But if I'd have had two of those, I've only got the one LED driver and that can only drive five LEDs. But if I'd have had two of those, I were going to add two of those to it and you could have had ten LEDs in a cascade. And, uh, you know, like 10 LEDs flashing up and down like a mod meter. Working as a mod meter, working at an audio rate, it'd look really fancy that, wouldn't it? But anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like how else I never got around to it. <clears throat> Only took 10 minutes to make, but oh, surely you can make one of them. It's better than that last one I made, isn't it? There's a bit more in it, like it's a better, uh, it's a better amplifier, that 5A8. 588 Delta or whatever it is. Anyway, catch you later, folks. I'm gone.